Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part five of the Doctrine series. I guess we're going to go to Mark 11. And uh, we're going to skip around a little bit. Uh, I think the main theme of this subject is going to be the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because Jesus said to uh, avoid them. But before we do that, let's take a look at Mark 11, verse 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he, Jesus, sendeth forth two of his disciples. Now there's a thing in the scripture that says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. That was in a sort of their kind of um, court of law. You couldn't have one person uh, accuse somebody, one, uh, one person accuse somebody of something uh, like a capital crime, like murder or something, and it just, it wouldn't fly. So, but nowadays, uh, you the U.S. all over, all they got to do is have a wife call the police on her husband and say, oh, he hit me or whatever, and he goes to jail for domestic battery, and they take away all his guns, and yeah, and then, uh, gets in big trouble now there should always be two or three witnesses and no i'm not advocating domestic violence but hey let me tell you something if you married a guy and he's a danger leave that's how it should work the police shouldn't be involved in this kind of stuff so uh, verse 2, and uh, and Jesus, okay, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat, loose him and bring him. You know, a colt, a horse, right? And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? You know, what are you doing? That's not your colt. Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. So, did this guy offer to help Jesus? Was was he given a dream to help Jesus? We don't know. The Bible doesn't record. But obviously, this guy was more than willing to uh, allow his colt to be used to for Jesus to come into Jerusalem and he probably got the colt back but you know that's another story and they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met and they lose him and certain of them that stood there said unto them what do ye loosing the colt you know what do you think you're doing untying this horse and they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded them, uh, had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cast down branches off the trees and straw them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I mean, these are the kind of praises that you would give a king or the Lord himself. And you better believe the you-know-whos were definitely not happy about all this. Oh, no. They sure wouldn't be happy about this. Not, not in the least. 11. 
And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, Herod's temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. A lot of people don't know it, but the fig tree was the symbol of Judah. Israel was the wild olive tree. Whereas Judah's symbol was the fig tree. So when Jesus went to the fig tree and found no fruit, no good works, right? He's going to curse it. Do you know that uh, Judaism, the way it is now, there's no fruit. There is no good fruit in it, and it's cursed. Try telling that to your uh, normal church. Oh, they'll have a fit. Uh, I'm not sure if, I, I think I've covered uh, the fig tree thing in previous studies, but I'm going to go over it just a little bit. In Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve fell, in verse 7, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves, fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. What do you think the Masonic apron, uh, during their little rituals, represents? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a reference to uh, the fall. I really do. So, funny that uh, the first mention of fig in the Bible is Genesis 3, the fall. Yeah. Yeah, they, they fell. They're naked. And... They sewed a bunch of fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Hmm, very interesting, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, they call, some people call this the law of first mention. You take a word, find out the first place it appears in the King James Bible, and um, it usually gives you an idea of the theme for the rest of the Bible. So, yeah, I find it very interesting that uh, when people say, well, yeah, I believe the Bible, but it's full of errors. Well, then you're a liar. You know, you're like a politician. You know? Uh, <laughs> you know, you ask a politician around election time, hey, uh, what is your stance on um, drinking? You know, alcohol consumption. You know, a politician goes, uh, oh, you mean the um, alcohol that a, a man might use to spend all his weekly wages on and, and deprive his wife and children of food while he's drunk and stumbling around, wasting all his money on alcohol? Or are you talking about the wonderful spirits around the holidays where People drink and have fun and parties and enjoy themselves and make merriment. You know, uh, which which kind of alcohol consumption are you talking about? You know, that's a politician. Whichever way the wind blows, they're like a flag. You know, if it blows to the north, it blows to the south, the east, the west. That's, yeah. So, yeah, we believe the Bible, but really you know that's we really don't is what they'll they're basically telling you so now in first kings 425 
And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and, um, and under his fig tree. And uh, Israel was also likened unto uh, wild grapes, too. Uh, but that's a stretch, Chaplain Bob. How do you get that? You know, that's a real stretch. Well, how about Hosea 9 and verse 10? I found Israel like grapes, you know, grapevines. I've actually seen those when I was in Germany. I was in a town called town or city called Heilbronn and went to the countryside and there are grape vineyards all over the place. And let me tell you something, people. Germany's got some great wine. You know, everybody brags about German beer. You know, when I would finally get a weekend off and go to the park and uh, they sold beer and wine there and one of my biggest decisions was, well, do I want to drink beer or do I want to drink wine? That was a tough decision. Germans are famous for their white wine. Absolutely. Liebfrau milk, milch. Uh, Lieb means love. Frau is a married woman and milch is milk. So that's basically like love mother's milk is, yeah. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. You know, it's parallelism. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Baal Peor. Now, Baal was that satanic, you know, probably a fallen angel. They went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. Baal, Baal, Baal Peor, or Baal Peor. Yeah, they were they were into Satanism and abominations. All right, so let's go back to Mark eleven. Verse 12, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Just leaves, no fruit. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Jesus cursed the fig tree. There will never be any fruit, no fruit on that fig tree forever. Very few people get this. Very few. And yet everybody runs to the rabbis for instructions i see where churches are inviting rabbis in to speak and to teach them what are they teaching them nothing i would ever want to learn absolutely nothing no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples heard it and they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Wow. What would Jesus do? No. What did Jesus do? And there's another uh, I forget which, if it's in Matthew or Luke or John, where he took a whip of cords and beat them, and he's whipping them. <laughs> you know, Jesus was not some weak little guy, dude, and girls, boys and girls. No, 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 no. He was PO'd. Yep. 
overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer or allow that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. See, from what I understand, people would come in with a, uh, the coins for the temple, for the whatever rituals they were doing, and they would look at the coin and say, oh, well, that's a Roman coin. That's, a, that's ritually unclean. We can't use that, even though it was a weight of whatever, gold or silver or whatever it was. But here I got a temple coin that weighs half as much or maybe a third or maybe a quarter or a tenth. I don't know. But I'll trade you this valuable Roman coin for this less valuable temple coin because the temple coin's a holy coin and it's been blessed by the rabbi. And you can have it now for only $19.95. And if you act right now, we can get you this prayer shawl that was dipped in the River Jordan and prayed over by Rabbi Shlomo Menachem Cohen. Uh, yeah. And it's only $19.95. Oy vey, such a deal. I guess I'm pushing it, aren't I? Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. Destroy who? Jesus! Not the Romans. No, not the Romans. So why did they want to destroy him? For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. Yeah, this Jesus guy, he's, he's cutting into our business here. And he's telling people he's the Messiah, the Christ, and to believe on him. And he's doing all these miracles that we can't deny. This guy's cutting into our business and you know how it is when you cut into their business, they will kill you. And don't you love it when people uh, say, oh yeah, it was the religious leaders. It was the religious leaders. No, it wasn't the religious leaders. It was the Jays. Yeah. No, it wasn't the, uh, the Temple of Diana cult. It wasn't the people that worshipped Jupiter or Zeus or Odin. It wasn't the Buddhists. And it wasn't the Islamic. No. It wasn't any of them. And it wasn't the Hindus either. And the chiefs and the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him. Because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up by the roots. The fig tree was dried up. It was dying or dead. The fig tree had died. The symbol of Judah. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Yeah. The fig tree, the symbol of Judah, was cursed. It's withered away. It's dying. It was dying and dead. Verse 22. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what uh, things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive 
No, I just did a study on that. Forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Boy, that's a tough one, huh, guys, gals? Yeah. And by the way, some of you act, uh, I don't know. Well, there's a couple of you that, that send me emails like, like I'm some super spiritual person. Oh, boy. I'll guarantee you I'm not. I absolutely not. We all have we all have our things we struggle with. And until we die and get that resurrected body, we're going to struggle, you know? I wish I was half the person uh, half the person some of a couple of people think I am, you know? And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. So here comes the religious leaders, the priests, and no, these are not Catholic priests, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? Hmm. Huh? By what authority do you do this? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Boy, I tell you what, <laughs> you don't want to ask you don't want to ask Jesus a trick question. It don't it, it don't work. It's going to end badly for you every time. All right, I read this in a previous uh, study, but we're going to read it again. Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. Now, I'm going to do why what the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees were from the Bible. So they're just two different denominations of the religious leaders. Uh, but basically, the Sadducees were like the Levites that did the Levitical uh, book of Levitical laws, the burnt sacrifices and rituals and what have you. And the Pharisees were more scholarly, I guess you could say, in some ways. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Yeah, Jesus, uh, we want to see a magic show. Can you show us something, you know, a sign from heaven, a miracle, touched by an angel. Remember that stupid show? Uh, I knew somebody that liked watching that stupid show like it was something. No, thank you. He, Jesus, answered and said, said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Boy, Jesus used that word a lot. And if he was here, he'd probably... 
tell me I'm a hypocrite on a few things, but uh, maybe many things. I don't know. Oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? Why was Rome in charge of Jerusalem? Punishment, just like Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel and all the prophets had warned. They didn't want God for their king, so God gave them the king that they deserved. Can I get a modern day spiritual application? Washington, D.C., London, Berlin, Rome. Uh, I don't remember the capitals of Australia or uh, Canada, but yeah, you get the general idea. We're, we have the government that we deserve as a people, generally. Jesus said in verse 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Yeah, you guys forgot to pack a lunch. Ugh, do I got to tell you guys everything? Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and of the uh, uh, Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Ugh! Come on, guys, use your brains. Which, when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith! Why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven, of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, the doctrines, the beliefs of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Hmm. All right, let's go to Matthew 22. We're going to take a look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verse 15, Matthew 22 and verse 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. See, they're trying to trick him up so that they can accuse him to the Romans, I suppose, so that they can have him put to death. That's why a good defense lawyer will tell you, never talk to the police. Unless, of course, you called them and wanted to report a crime. But if the police come knocking at your door or ask you to come down to the police station and get a statement, uh, no. They're not your friends. They're not there to help you. They want to entangle you in your talk. They want you to talk and then admit that you broke some obscure little crime or law or what do they, I uh, forget what they call it, some, yeah, well, not everything's a law, but whatever, you know, some something offense, some kind of offense that'll either cost you uh, jail time or a fine or whatever. You know, don't, don't talk, don't talk to the cops, B bad, bad idea. Yeah, remind them of your right to remain silent by, per the Constitution and then ask for an attorney. And, uh, yeah. But Jesus didn't have that. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. 
And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. So here it is, the disciples of the Pharisees with the Herodians, the, the, the friends of Herod, friends and family of Herod. You know, Herod that killed all the children in Bethlehem trying to kill Jesus. Yeah, that family. And they were saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Yeah, let's, let's flatter you and butter you up here. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute or taxes? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? I wonder how many times Jesus called them hypocrites in the Bible. There's one chapter uh, where he does it like six, seven, eight, nine times. Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? Whose picture is on this coin? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. You don't want to ask Jesus a trick question. He's going to make a fool of you. Every single time. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. No resurrection? Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. You mean there's no life after this life? You mean this life is it? You die, that's it? You're not coming back with a new body? No wonder they were sad. You see? I mean, really? There's no resurrection? There's nothing after this life? There's nothing to look forward to? Then let us eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And that's in the Bible, by the way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed, or children, unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, no children, left his wife unto his brother, likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. That's where you get the word error, E-R-R. -R. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You guys just don't get it. You don't know the Bible and you don't know the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry, they don't get married, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And it's funny that a lot of false people Teachers will leave off those last two words of this sentence. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. See, see, Satan and his angels are angels of God. And they're not married and they're not given in marriage. They can't have children. No, it's impossible. But in the King James it says, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Well, guess what? Not all the angels of God are in heaven. A third of them were cast down to the earth, along with their daddy, the devil, and Satan, which is the same thing. Totally ignore Job 38 and Genesis 6. Totally ignore it, because they don't want you to know who they are. But as touching the resurrection of the dead... 
Have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Oh, we might as well keep reading. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, you know, a doctor of the law, Now, let me stop right here. Do you know that Harvard and Yale were originally created as Bible colleges? And from what I understand, Oxford and Cambridge were too. Yeah. Do you know the King James Bible was uh, put together by scholars from Oxford and Cambridge? Yeah. They were. Scholars. People that believed the Bible. People that could read the original languages. People that knew what manuscripts to use. People that had command of the English language and Hebrew and Greek. Yeah. And now Harvard has classes on anal sex. Yeah. As uh, an elective. Can you imagine that? A class on anal sex. Ugh. Oh, and guess what they're, uh, guess what uh, they're, uh, the president of Harvard is uh, one of those religious leaders. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a J. Absolutely. Yeah. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Hmm. Jesus said to, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And believe it or not, these that, that exact quote, I forget if it's in, I think it's in Deuteronomy, but it's in the first five books of the Bible. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all, all the law and the prophets. Tell that to the Hebrew roots crowd or the Noahides. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go to Acts real quick. We're going to study what do the Pharisees and Sadducees believe. Acts chapter 23. Paul is being interrogated. Verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias, you know, the guy that put Christ to help put Christ to death. And the high priest, Ananias, commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. They smacked him in the mouth, hit him in the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? And Paul, then, Paul, then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest. Yeah, I wish this guy was not the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Wow. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am called in question. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead, 
I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude were divided. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection. Well, we found that out in the last uh, thing I read, right? The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. Sadducees don't believe in angels. Really, they don't believe in angels, nor spirit. But the Pharisees confess both. Okay. See, the Pharisees believed their opinions of the rabbis. Yeah, they're, it's kind of like their commentary on the what we call the Old Testament. And if you ask five rabbis for a, an opinion, you'll get five different opinions. Probably three will contradict the other two. Sort of like the popes. You know, you get one pope that says one thing, and then another pope will say the exact opposite. But they both speak for God. Is God the author of confusion? Well, maybe their God is the author of confusion. I don't know. I, I don't follow the Pope, but never did. I think I, I think I went to a Catholic church at least once that I can remember with a buddy of mine when I was real little. And him and me were cutting up and parents didn't particularly like that and I was never invited back again. Probably to my advantage. So, all right. So the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection of the dead. They don't believe in angels. But the Pharisees believe in angels, and they believe in the resurrection. So that's the difference between the, the, these two sects of Judaism. Verse 9. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, uh, the Roman, you know, Roman army's captain, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. Now this is Jesus speaking. Be of good cheer, Paul, for thou, for as Thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now, I want you to think about something. Uh, when you hear somebody deny that Paul is a false apostle, tell them to rip out the book of Acts from their Bible. Rip it out. Throw it away. I mean, really. They're like the Sadducees of the New Testament. They really are. They're telling you that the book of Acts is wrong, along with all of other all the other Paul's books. I mean, I, I know what spirit they are. They're the spirit of the devil, no doubt in my mind. Paul died for the faith. These Hebrew roots that deny Paul, none of them have denied, uh, have died have denied, I'm sorry, have died for their faith. None of them. They might get the chance. And let me tell you something, people. I don't, my opinion, my opinion, I think these people that don't bother to read the Bible, you know, people, people hazarded their lives. People were killed for daring to give us the scriptures in our own language. And people won't even bother to pick it up and read it? Seriously? I mean, <laughs> you know, how many of them are going to be deceived? You know, Matthew 24, Jesus warned deception would be prevalent. He said, be not deceived. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Even the very elect. 
And these people think they, no, there's no way I could be deceived. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I do blah, 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 speaking in tongues. Boy, I'll tell you what. If I had a choice between speaking in tongues and understanding the Bible, I th think I'll take the Bible every time. So, Paul's told of the Lord, you testify to me in Jerusalem, you're going to Rome. Well, guess what? You ever heard of the book of Romans? Yeah. Verse 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. And yet people will tell you it was Pontius Pilate in Rome that killed Jesus and Paul and the apostles. Well, 10 of the 12. Judas hung himself. And John, who wrote the book of Revelation, not John the Baptist, John the Apostle. Uh, he's the only one that died of old age. All the rest were killed for their faith. Seriously. You know, <laughs> but uh, the preacher of rapture crowd, oh, they can't have that. No, uh-uh. Why, we're the bride of Christ. God would never allow us to get beaten up. He's not a wife beater. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Stephen was chopped liver because he got stoned. And no, it wasn't skunkweed either. Yeah, I grew up in Florida when, yeah, never mind. Yeah, we, we used to have skunkweed. And no, I'm not bragging. I'm, you know, yeah. And if you keep reading this in Acts, uh, guess, guess who protected Paul and saved him from the being killed by the religious leaders. It was Rome. Rome protected Paul. The captain. The captain. Paul's sister's son. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's going to be a, some people that are going to have to apologize to... Uh, Pilate accusing him of murdering you know who Jesus uh, from what I understand uh, from uh, according to legend I don't know how true it is Pilate became a believer I don't know if that's true or not but uh, you know I mean let me fa let's face it Jesus is running around well, teaching. And at one point, he's got thousands of people there listening to him. Pilate was probably shaking in his shoes, thinking, oh boy, if this guy makes an insurrection or riots against us, we're in trouble. Because from what I understand, the Roman, uh, Rome had expanded so much that they didn't have enough troops to cover all the areas uh, for riot control. That's what I understand. Pilate had sent uh, word to the guy in Syria that he was having problems with Jerusalem and if he could spare some troops to help him. And the guy in Syria said, I got my own problems. I don't even have enough troops for me. I can't help you. Now, I don't know how true that is, but I've read that. So Pilate was like, you know, he doesn't want riots. You know, if there's riots, Rome's going to call him to the mat and say, hey, what's going on here? You can't control the area that we've given you uh, power over? And he'd get removed. And if they ju judged him that he was guilty of something, he might even be put to death. So... You know, Pilate, I'll guarantee you, Pilate had spies that were following Jesus around, listening to what he said. 
I will guarantee you he did, and probably more than one. And they probably didn't even know each other because that's how you test your people. You know, you send out three sets of spies, and they all come back, <coughs> and they don't know each other, and they all tell you the same thing. Well, you could pro you could bet your uh, bottom dollar that they're telling the truth. But you send out three guys, and you know you get three different stories. Something's not. Eh, something's wrong. Something's up. Something's up. So. All right, let's go to math. Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark 12, uh, verse 38. And he, Jesus, said unto them in his doctrine, he said, beware of the scribes. Uh, scribes were the copyists of the law. They were the ones that wrote the Bible by hand. You know, they were the, uh, basically the, they modern day they would be the book printers but everything was handwritten uh, gutenberg a german invented the printing press that forever changed the world and the very first book gutenberg ever printed was the bible yeah it's called the gutenberg bible i wish i had an original copy of the gutenberg bible i'd probably sell it and be will be able to retire well never mind but jesus said beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces you know they love uh greetings in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues you know, the most important seating in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts. So when you look up, you're looking at the, fair, uh, the, the scribes. Verse 40, which devour widows' houses. How do they devour widows' houses? Well, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, I've mentioned this before. And the... Um, the Catholic priests used to do the same exact thing. They probably learned it from the scribes. But uh, you know why the reason why when you buy or sell a house, the seller has to be there, the buyer has to be there, a, um, and then there has to be two witnesses and a notary or an attorney. So you have to have a minimum of five people there to sell property. Do you know why? Because, from what I understand, and the, the Catholic priests used to do the same thing as the scribes would. The man of the house would be dying. So they would have the scribe or the rabbi or the Catholic priest go in to the room. He's on his deathbed. And then he says, oh, I'm going to pray for this guy. Everybody out of the room. Out of the room. And then they would uh, do long prayers. And then after the guy dies, kicks the bucket, buy, bought the farm, the scribe or the priest would walk out of the room and say, oh, this man, he did such a wonderful work. He donated all his land and house to the church or the synagogue or whatever. So what does the widow and her children get? Nothing. Oh, you guys got to leave. But but rabbi or father, it, it's, it's winter. It's cold out there. Where are we going to live? Oh, not my problem. Get out. It belongs to me now. Yeah. Do you know, it was so bad in England. It was so bad in England, this happening. The public outcry was so, uh, so much that England changed the law that there had to be the buyer, the seller, a notary or a lawyer, and two witnesses to transfer a piece of property. One priest couldn't do it anymore. No way.
a lot of people lost their property. Can you imagine kicking a widow and her children out of the house in the middle of winter, nowhere to go with nothing? Yeah, they did that. Listen to this, verse 40. Well, 38, beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Not only is there damnation, there's greater damnation. Wow, think about that. They, they devoured widows' houses. What kind of a cold, heartless bastard, and bastard is a Bible word, by the way. What kind of cold, heartless bastard would kick a, a widow and her children out, out on the street in the middle of winter? Yeah, greater damnation. Oh, yeah think about it. That's why we uh, have the laws change the way they are now. That's why they require, a, you know, a title for a car and, you know, what have you. To, you know, you just can't have a priest walk in and say, well, you know, the, the, the guy gave me his property, you know, before he died because he wants to help the church or the synagogue or whatever. Pretty good scam, huh? It's no wonder Jesus whipped him out of the synagogue or the temple and called him a den of thieves. All right, let's take a look at, uh, this has been mostly about bad doctrines for the most part. Well, for part of it, I don't know. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, the book of Timothy and the book of Titus are considered uh, what they call pastoral epistles or letters, uh, pastoral as in pastors, of which I'm not one. I'm not qualified to be a pastor. I'm just a Bible teacher and uh, appreciate it if you all would keep me in your prayers because, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, we all need Pray for each other, right? Yeah, things are getting real. And be honest, I'm surprised I'm still on tube. I really am. I'm shocked. So you got two choices. Either, um, either I work for the enemy, which I'm doing a really lousy job if I am, or Father's protecting the channel for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they're collecting our names. I don't know. Whatever. Um, I've been on their list for over 30 years now. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a whole other story, but uh, yeah. All right, First Timothy chapter four, verse one. Now the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. You see, the Spirit speaks. There's people will tell you the Holy Spirit isn't a person. No, it's just electricity, the force. Use the force, Luke. The force. No, I don't think so. The Bible clearly teaches that man was made in God's image. And God made man to have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Three parts makes up one person. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And he wasn't talking to the angels. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, the Spirit, that in the latter times, latter as in last days, and we're not talking about the, uh, the Mormons and the latter day ain'ts, not saints, but ain'ts, because they ain't, they ain't saints. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. I think we're there, people giving heed to seducing spirits, you know, fallen angels, and doctrines of devils. 
Doctrines of Devils. You know how you spell devil? Put a capital D in front of an evil. Take evil and put a capital D in front of it and you got devil. Or is that just a coincidence? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies. Yeah, just like their father of lies. Genesis 3. Ye shall not surely die. From the days ye eat thereof, ye shall, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh, paraphrase of Genesis 3. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Boy, Jesus said hypocrites a lot. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, even before I came to the back to the Lord, I did some things that my conscience bothered me with. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, uh, you're doing, you're, you're doing, or, or you're in a place you shouldn't be. You're in the wrong place. You know, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Verse three, the doctrines of devils forbidding to marry. Forbidding marriage? Hmm. Guess what? Um, in Buddhism, the Buddhist monks are not allowed to marry, from what I understand. Is there another religious group that forbids marriage? Uh, let's see. Are the Catholic priests allowed to get married? Ooh, wait a minute. They're not, are they? Hmm. Or is that just a coincidence? But I, don't th I think it's going to be more widespread. I think they'll be talking about climate change and overpopulation. We can't have marriage. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Vegetarianism. Did you know vegetarianism is a doctrine of devils? Absolutely. Absolutely. When Jesus uh, was resurrected and Peter and the rest uh, some of them were fishing he uh, laid on a bed of coals uh, fish and bread right fish is meat right yeah you know the Bible tells you uh, what what clean meats are to eat but in the last days they're gonna forbid marriage and commanding to abstain from meats. Oh, wait a minute. Um, you could eat bugs. Yeah, well, you could eat bugs. Uh, yeah, that's our friends in the, um, you know, the they call themselves the elite. Yeah, they're going to eat beef and what have you, but they're not, they're going to tell us we got to eat bugs. You know, we got to save the environment from those cow farts. Yeah, yeah. The, the cow farts are going to end the world. Global warming or climate change or whatever they call it now. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. See, God created clean meats, but he also created unclean meats. You know, like pigs. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Hmm. You know, and we're, we're not talking about pigs. I mean, you know, somebody ate pigs. It's not a, it's not a salvation issue. Oh, you're going to hell because you ate a pig. I don't think so, but. You know, it's just a good health idea not to do that. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wives' fables, 
and exercise, thel- and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. The resurrection. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For there, uh, for therefore we both labor, labor, you know, work, and suffer reproach. Uh, when somebody reproaches you, they're, you know, it's criticism, criticism, but it's more than just criticism. Reproach can be, you know, maybe you're punished, beaten. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Hmm. Now remember, Timothy had a believing mother and grandmother who taught him from the very littlest about the Lord. Paul says, let no man despise thy youth. You know, I'd rather listen to a a 20-year-old that loves the Lord with all his heart with education than some 50-year-old that's been in ministry for 40 years that is a liar, cheat, and hypocrite. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. What is exhorting? Encouragement. And to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. Well, it seems like uh, Timothy had the gift of prophecy. With the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. What is presbytery? It's a, if I remember correctly, it's a Greek word that means uh, the elders. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that they profiting may appear to all. Take heed to thyself and unto the doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine of Christ. Continue in them, for in doing this, Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Wow. And people will tell you that Paul is a false apostle. Tell them to go to hell. Well, they probably are. They just don't know it yet. I mean, seriously? You think this is the writings of a false apostle? And then they they want you to think how spiritual they are because they go Yeshua Hamashiach and the Ruach, whatever the, they call the Holy Spirit. Well, to them, the Holy Spirit is the She, She Kina, which is their goddess. Yeah, that's why they spell it S H E, She Kina, the goddess. The queen of heaven. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. But, hey, they want to follow, uh, they want to follow that mess? Well, go for it, buddy boy, girly girl. I don't care. I'm just here to warn whoever father sends my way to listen to my raving and rantings. You know, I don't do this for my health. So, what can I tell you? Uh, all I know is, one day I was studying the Bible and I felt like the Lord had kind of sort of convicted me and gave me a boot in the rear and says, go teach. You know, I didn't want this job, trust me. I did not want this job. I think I like getting on the internet and combating all these heretics, all the Paul haters, all the pre-trib rapture people, all the people that 
uh, bless the those that curse Jesus. Yeah, I don't enjoy this. Trust me. You know, I I, you know, I don't mind doing the Bible studies, but the uh, all the other stuff I could live without. But it it all comes with a job. And any of you thinking about getting into ministry stuff, you better get a thick skin because, yeah, one day it might uh, cost us our lives. Nobody ever died for Yeshua HaMashiach. Nobody. They might have died for Joshua, you know, the sixth book in the Bible. You know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. But they don't like that because it's Joshua's got a J. And there's no J in Hebrew. So you can't call him Jesus. Oh, okay. I guess Jews don't exist. And I guess Jerusalem doesn't exist either because it's got a J. Yeah. I hate those people. I, I, I'm supposed to love them, but I kind of hate them. Kind of. Sort of. But I'm supposed to love them. Well, I'm not supposed to love heretics, so. All I know is all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.